won't be live to Facebook because we're anticipating problems. There have been no such problems. So Vanessa, my lovely, and Imogen, would you like to play another tune for us, please? <laughs> Thank you. And if you've just come on, could you please make sure that you're muted? <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Service of the Word. Uh, we are live streaming here from the Vicarage in Claims, and this is our service for St George's Church and Claims Church in Worcester. Uh, welcome to you if you're following this on Facebook or on YouTube, and please do, if you're on Facebook, please do type in your, your prayers, your comments, your thoughts, um, we really we love to see what people have, um, have thought during the service. Delighted today to have Reverend Peter Davis, who will be preaching for us. And um, thank you to our drivers, our Zoom drivers. And so this morning we're going to begin with our opening worship, our opening hymn, O oh, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness.
thank you, Vanessa, and thank you, Imogen. We're going to move to our opening responses now. So please do respond with the words in bold. The word of the eternal father created us. The love of the gracious son redeems us. The presence of the Holy Spirit empowers us. Let us worship the glorious Trinity, God of power and love and peace. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, your dance should send us spinning into the world to live out and declare your love. But we confess that our vision is blurred by fear and self-interest. You give us clear commandments about love, justice and righteousness. But we pretend not to understand them. You promise to be with us always. But we ignore your presence and follow our own way. Forgive us, give us fresh vision and restore us to your way, we pray. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. And the collect prayer for today, the second Sunday after Trinity. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to light this candle now and just say a few words about our activity today. What started in these services with the idea that we would offer an activity for children has um, increasingly become an activity for anybody. Uh, so if you want to, to join in, do. The theme of our service today is discipleship. And we're going to be hearing from Reverend Peter the, the, sometimes the cost of that discipleship and the need, the need to, if you like, to nail our colours to the mast. And um, in thinking of that, um, I decided that I would, I think if, you, if we just share the screen for a moment, there's a screen of a, a lovely ship with, um, thank you, Elizabeth. You can see how um, to show the colours, to show who, the, the ship is on the side of, if you like, and I'm sure Peter's going to say more about that, but people would put the different colours onto the mast, these different flags, show who that they, who they were supporting. And um, if we can just come back to me, I've made this, it's just a piece of paper, but I thought, well, what sort of symbols, what symbols would um, show who I support and what sort of disciple I am? So on my very simple flag. I've got a picture of the cross, but I've kept this bit white here to show that I'm still a learner because that's what a disciple is, a learner. And um, I'm a following, a follower of, this, of Jesus, but I'm still learning. Boy, have I got a lot to learn. And so we've got this cross here. So that would be my, my flag that I would nail to the mast. But then I thought, actually, my stole, this is my stole for ordinary time, which is what we're in now. And my stole is a bit like me nailing my colours to the mast because I had this stole made when I was a curate and I was not just a curate, I was also um, uh, authorised to the Methodist church. And if you look very carefully on here, I've got these little bubbles, you probably can't see, little bubbles that are the Church of England cross. And I've also got these little bubbles here that are the symbol of the Methodist church because I was a Methodist minister authorised to do that. Um, and that was my, my way of saying I'm an ecumenical person. I support both churches. So we're going to move on now with our first reading. We've switched them around today because our emphasis is very much on the Romans, uh, Romans reading. And so over to Pam now for our reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel is taken from Matthew 10, 24 to 39. A disciple is not above the teachers, 
nor a slave above the masters. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Pam. We're going to sing again now. And uh, while we're doing that, you might like to make your own flag um, to show what uh, how you would symbolise your discipleship and how you would cut and nail your colours to the mast. We're going to sing now, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Thank you, Vanessa.
Now over to Mike for our reading from the letter to the Romans. Dying and rising with Christ. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized unto his death? Therefore, we've been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united in him, with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died in Christ, we believe that we can also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So we must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Over to Rev Peter. Good morning, everyone. We've just heard a passage from St Paul's letter to the Romans. And at this moment, you're going to have to forgive me. Borrowing from Monty Python, how we have to ask, what has Romans ever done for us? How does the letter to the Romans bring us the faith equivalent benefits of the aqueduct, sanitation, roads, irrigation, medicine, education and the wine, public baths, public order, and has it brought peace? Forgive me, please, for being a very naughty boy. Now, in both our readings, Jesus and Paul were inhabiting very conflicted faith territory. Jesus' words, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Whenever you come across these sorts of conflicts in the Bible, please just think of one word, discipleship. Hang on to that and you can't go far astray. Discipleship. You see, Jesus is not offering a fancy philosophical school of religious thought. Instead, we have to go back to Jesus' core message in the gospel. And St. Mark tells us what Jesus' words were. It underpins everything. Repent and believe the gospel. Now, this is not about wallowing in penance, but it is about turning away from the past that did not acknowledge God's loving purposes and turning to Jesus, his son. It's only in Jesus that we will discover this. And there's the key. Discovering is a journey of finding out, following, and that's what discipleship is about. Back in Jesus' day, if a fellow wanted an education, he would find a rabbi and study under him and imitate him. But Jesus' invitation to discipleship is a completely different league. It wasn't classroom learning. It was out there, on the road, in the marketplace, and it was even dangerous. To imitate Jesus meant stepping outside the certainty and comfort zone of family and town life. To be a disciple of Jesus means redrawing the boundaries of loyalty. You had to nail your colours to the mast if you wanted to be a disciple of Jesus. Nailing your colours to the mast is a naval expression. The ship shows its flag, its colours, indicating readiness for battle and a battle in which you would fight to the last. Nailing your colours to the mast meant no surrender to the enemy. I'm going to show you a photograph, a picture of someone who knew exactly what it meant to nail his colours to the mast. 
I hope you can all see that. This is my grandfather and it was taken in 1928. And this is commissioned engineer R.H. Davies, Royal Navy on board HMS Adventure, which was his last ship. He was born in 1882. Uh, he joined as a stoker in the Royal Navy in 1904, worked and studied his way from the absolute lowest of the low in the Royal Navy uh, to win his commission. For Jesus to get his point of nailing your colors to the mast uses a very powerful figure of speech to follow Jesus expressly meant priority over family relationships. Not that you stop loving them. That's not what Jesus is saying, but Jesus' call to discipleship is all or nothing. There was the conflict around discipleship with Jesus, and there was conflict in the early Christian church that St. Paul was addressing. Paul asks this question, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound. What on earth is going on here? Simply put, some people were saying that salvation through Jesus Christ was incompatible with morality. Pause for a second. They wrongly reasoned that if God released people from the debt of sin through the faithfulness of Christ Jesus, Everyone could crack on with loads more sinning and God would pour out all the more grace. It is complete and utter rubbish. OK, get that. It's a load of tosh. And similar happened in Corinth, where some church members thought this. Get this. I mean, come on. An incestuous relationship between a couple in the church, they thought, was a fine example of Christian liberty. All right, make the point. That was why there were some people in St. Paul's Day that they were saying that the only way to keep on the moral straight and narrow was to obey the law of Moses. That's so much of the conflict that was going on that Paul was dealing with in his writings. Now, the moral code from Moses is absolutely perfectly good. It's incontrovertible. But keeping it did not put right wrongs with God. If Paul's Damascus Road conversion from being this ultra-religious Jewish scholar taught anything, if it taught anything, it was only through trust in the faithfulness of Christ that would come to us pardon and peace. When we give our life to Christ, when we choose to become a disciple of Jesus, we nail our colors to the mast and we are inwardly and radically transformed by the Holy Spirit. We receive a new nature and our new nature spontaneously produces the fruit of the Spirit. Paul tells us that in Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And Paul in our reading shows this through the sacrament of baptism. In effect, Paul is asking, how can life in sin coexist with death to sin? How can life in sin coexist with death to sin? In Paul's day, Baptism followed immediately upon confession of trust and faith in Christ. They were parts of the one whole. You did the one thing and then the next thing happened. And that would have been the lived experience of his readers to that letter. In being plunged into the waters of baptism, they were figuratively buried with Christ in his death at Calvary on the cross. And their old life was dead and gone. And when they emerged from the waters, they were raised up, as was Christ raised from the tomb. And so they received new life in Christ Jesus. Therefore, Paul's question, how 
should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? How on earth could a disciple, a follower of Jesus do that? The very idea is moral corruption. But, but sometimes we fall short of God's best purposes for us. That's why we have confession. There will be times when we are unloving, when we disregard the needs of others, when we play deaf to God. How do we respond? Let's instead see it from God's side. There's a lovely old hymn. Don't know whether you know it. No one understands like Jesus. And there's this verse. No one understands like Jesus every woe he sees and feels. Tenderly he whispers comfort and the broken heart he heals. The broken heart he heals. Never, please never lose sight of that, especially in these conflicted and very strange times. Made more challenging when we can't meet face to face in church. Without God's inner healing, his inner change, there can be no outer change. All that we seek to fulfill as Jesus' disciples happens because of the inner change brought about by our trust in Christ Jesus' faithfulness. Consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's the starting point of this new life we have in Jesus that Paul describes in this wonderful passage from Romans. And that's what happens when you nail your colours to Christ's mast. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Peter. That was, um, there was so much to think about in that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing people's flags, people's colours to see what they, what symbols they've chosen and picked from that. Um, I think for me, having heard your talk, it would, it would be something growing. I think maybe a little seed buried in the soil and starting to grow out, a symbol that I am still very much on that journey and growing into that new nature, that new life. We're going to sing again now and we're going to sing Before the Throne of God. Thank you to Vanessa and Imogen.
we're going to say together now the words of the creed and the creed is is really um the nailing our colors to the mast in words this is a, a summary of the the longer creeds that we where we say what we believe so so let us declare our faith in god we believe in god the father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named we believe in god the son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now John Brady is going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, open our eyes that we may see you in our brothers and sisters. Lord, open our ears that we may hear the cries from the hungry, the frightened, the oppressed. Lord, open our hands that we may reach out to all who are in need. And Lord, open our hearts that we may love each other as you love us. Amen. Lord, we know this virus threatens and affects all peoples throughout the world, but with it comes an opportunity for the new normal, for new life. Isn't that what Jesus offered all who chose his path? Along with fear comes a chance for change and renewal for a new direction a God direction. And so we pray for the change offered to us, for a change in how we treat our world and its gifts, its environment and creatures. We pray for a change so, so badly needed, Lord, in how we treat our fellow brothers and sisters, no matter what their backgrounds, their ethnicity or attitudes or beliefs, we are all God's children, no matter what our differences. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves, that we too may change in a way that brings about all that we pray for, for that which brings your kingdom closer for us all. This we pray in the name of him who offered new life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Black Lives Matter is a dominant theme in the media. Yet before you, Lord, all lives matter. All are of worth in your eyes. And so we pray for all peoples, for those living in the world's great cities, and perhaps especially at this time for those in the cities of America, for those in the refugee camps and shanty towns, those in war zones, or on both sides of any division, for the rich and the poor, in developed and developing countries, the rural and the urban. We pray for harmony amongst the one God-given race, the human race. We pray that all its members may learn to live in peace, learn to welcome and rejoice in the differences. Surely, Lord, it cannot be that difficult for us all to learn simply to get along. We pray for that simple idea in Jesus' name. Amen. This next prayer, we think of those who are ill, bereaved, those who struggle day to day. And so we hold before God those for whom life is very difficult, those who have difficult decisions to make and who honestly don't know what is the right thing to do. We hold before God those who have difficult tasks to do and face, and who fear that they may fail in them. Those who have difficult temptations to face, and who know only too well that they may fall to them if they try to meet them alone. We hold before God those who know that they can be their own worst enemies. 
We hold before God those who have difficult people to work with, those who have to suffer unjust treatment, unfair criticism, unappreciated work. And we hold before God those who are sad because someone they love is ill or has died. Lord, we pray that you will hold them close in your loving hands, that they will find comfort in your presence. Amen. Of course, it's Father's Day today. Lord, on this day, we give you thanks for the true joys of fatherhood. We also remember those families who are parted from their fathers, yet remember them on this day with love and affection. As our Father, we ask that you guide all fathers so that they may become role models and loving parents to their children and families. May they, we pray, be as you, our Father, are to us and grant them the grace and patience to nurture their families with true love and care. This we ask in your name, Father, to us all. So we finish with the Lord's Prayer. Please join in. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, John. Now, at this point uh, in church, I would normally say, would you please stand? <laughs> but we won't be standing. We'll just remain sitting unless you really want to stand. When two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I think the this is the peace be with you, or peace be with you, or peace be with you. Let's all share. I'm just going to have a quick look at everybody saying peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. Oh, I like, oh yes, peace be with you. Lovely. Very good. Well done, everyone. I can only see four of you at a time, so I have to swipe along to see everyone. We're going to sing again now. And um, I had no idea when I put this together that John would be referring to building your kingdom. And, and this song that has been pre-recorded by um, a really lovely group um, of people from both churches, which is what I love so much about these services. So um, there's Adrian, Sue Ashby, Barbara Mitra, David Meacham, um, Alison, Alison Clark, I'm, I'm sure this, and Joe Siddles. So a lovely sort of blended band. Um, and they're going to sing and play Build Your Kingdom Here. I know this will be a new one for some of you, um, but it's got a really jaunty tune and um, you have to be quick with the words, but I'm sure you will get the hang of it. So over to the, the blended band, I shall call them. Thank you. There's just a very long intro.
fab thank you to all of them they they work so hard to to pull these things together and um I, I just can't wait for the for the next one so thank you to everyone um i wonder now whether we could share uh, if anyone has made a flag or to nail to the mast could we have a perhaps um could we be unmuted maybe is that possible elizabeth and just speak no she says no to speak they have to unmute themselves there's a little oh, hidden feature at the moment okay so unmute yourself if you well john clearly wants to share his so let's let's hear from john what's yours john okay one world one human race working for peace and harmony okay so goes with the prayers i did very good thank I've, you john. i've emphasized i've emphasized one human race as well i think which is important yes, john. Yeah, that's fabulous um anybody else let me see oh pam has got a flag it's not very good but mine says at the top i belong to you with a heart which is asking to show me the way and then there are pathways with hearts coming off. Um, show me where I am needed. Let me share the word. Make me worthy. Let me welcome all. You are my strength. Thank you for your love. Wow, Pam, that is quite something there. No tall order there, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Emily. Oh, a picture of some church. A bit closer to the So we've got this. Oh, that's the church with the door open and so we're open for business and we're giving god's love wow that's excellent very good i suspect that that was a joint effort wasn't it Dave? <laughs> very good who's next let's see anybody else oh no oh we've got phil at phil first and then Jeff and Sue. So Phil and Jan. 
This is sort of lots of ideas which still needs to go into the art studio to turn it into a flag. <laughs> but at the top, and it does rather look like a virus, and that's deliberate. Oh. At the top, it says, the virus of faith and love knows no boundaries. And at the center, it says God's love for us. In the circle surrounding that, it says our love for each other and the world. And then the arrows pointing out are God's love radiating out into the world in the shape of mission, compassion, and outreach. Fantastic. I'm really impressed with these, with these flags. This is brilliant. Sue and Jeff, over to you. Can you unmute yourself? Thank you. Well, Sue says I've got it the wrong way up, but <laughs> the, that's by the by. Um, the, the whole idea is... Uh, uh, is is making the uh, uh, getting pa passing on the gospel to to the people around. Wow. But, yeah. No, that's that's. Not, I'm struggling to see the picture, but I I I think I've got the wrong glasses on, Jeff. <laughs> oh yes, I can see now. I can see. Thank you, Sue. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Anybody else now? Anyone? Yes. Oh, who's that? Has, um, you, I think Jane wants to talk. Jane? Michael. Is it Michael? Okay. Oh, right. Michael and Jane. Thank you. Yeah. So, so this is uh, the voyage of living with Jesus and uh, that it, it never ends. Absolutely. That's fabulous. And you, you are actually a sailor, aren't you, Mike? Oh, so. <laughs> so you should know you're going to put that on your on your boat <laughs> yeah i don't think it'll last long <laughs> can i just show you a light moment this is what you, Jill. You, you notice michael has a beard now this is what one of his dear sons sent this yeah. morning <laughs> <laughs> i love it very and good last that is yes, very I good it was yes you could have anybody a else got a flag what about Lillian Raya? Have you got anything? No? Um, anybody else? No, I think that's everybody. Or oh, do I James? Has James got anything to share? We, uh, we only did squiggles. <laughs> Very good. I love that, James. Well done. Good work. Good work. I think Bob and Barbara were trying to share. Something. Okay. Yeah, quite a simple flag. The world, one world, one Christ, and a dragon for St. George, but Bob thinks it looks like a chameleon. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they're related. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you. Um, just a couple of notices. Um, first of all, just to confirm, that at St George's uh, we, we've decided that we're not going to open for private prayer yet, but we will review that situation on the 13th of July. But it claims we had a great working party yesterday. The church is 90% um, cleaned and ready, and we will open from 10 till 12 this coming Saturday. And we are going to just see how that goes with the volunteers that we've got. So, so thank you very much to them. Um, I want to just, I wonder if Rev Paula might like to say something. Um, I know she's, she's there somewhere because she had a very important meeting with a certain bishop on Wednesday. So Rev Paula, I'm sorry I'm throwing you in here, but are you more, to... more of it? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I um, completed my three years curacy with you all um, and I had a sign off meeting with Bishop Martin on Wednesday, which was quite in depth. It lasted about 50, 50, 55 minutes, which is quite a long time. Um, and uh, he, yes, he was a lovely man. Um, uh, and I now have to have, before I make any decisions, I now have to have um, conversations with both archdeacons uh, because with all the reorganization that's going on in the diocese, um, they may have some recommendations for me before I put my oar in. 
So uh, I, I have to speak to the archdeacons next, but thank you all so much for all your support and encouragement and, um, and for putting up with all my, my blunderings and my fumblings and uh, so you, you've all been so good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And especially to Joe. I, I can't put it into words. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. That's that's I mean, we, we are so absolutely um, blessed to to have had you as our curate. And you, you know that I would, you know, give my right arm for you to stay. But we also understand the, the situation in the diocese. So we, we just hope uh, and we pray for God's uh, God's guidance for you at this, this really quite a challenging time. Um, pray for you for wisdom um, and for for God's will to be very clear to you. Um, shall we just be be still for a moment and pray for Rev Paula? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing that Paula has been to us all. Her kindness, her compassion, her her smile, her friendliness, for her deep deep faith and lord we thank you for that and pray lord that she can stay with us as long as is possible um, but also lord we pray for your guidance for her for your love and protection for her as she now considers her next step forward and we pray lord that you will uphold her with your strength and your presence and her family too in jesus name amen thank you joe thank you so um, I think that is all now. I think those are all the notices. There was a slide. So maybe if we could just have a quick look at the slide because um, it was number slide 36. It might just remind me if I've missed. Oh yes, thank you. So on Wednesday, uh, we celebrate in the church, we celebrate the, the birth of John the Baptist. Um, and so I'm going to be doing that service from Clanes Church this Wednesday. I'm going to live stream from Clanes. Um, bless David Terry, he's gonna ring the bell at St George's for me. Um, and we've got a special guest because we've got the Archdeacon Robert Jones, who's going to be um, sharing his reflection on the significance of John the Baptist. So I do hope you'll join me on Clanes Facebook page uh, on Wednesday at half past 10. And we look forward to that. And now we're going to sing our final hymn, which is At the Name of Jesus, and over to Imogen and Vanessa. Thank you. <laughs>
Well, thank you to everyone that's taken part today. Um, I, I always love to watch the service again um, and see all the different comments on Facebook. So I hope our Facebook followers have been typing in comments and prayers. Um, maybe you've made flags too, and maybe you'd like to share pictures of them later on. And so now we come to the end of our service. And so the blessing. May the, the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and care for now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.